Now charting a better road to recovery. One year ago, Eyewitness News took you inside a new family-centered model at Women and Infants Hospital that's designed to care for opioid-addicted mothers and their babies. Doctors say it's making big strides today, pointing to a drop in costs and the length of treatment. And tonight, Eyewitness News anchor Danielle North has a look at the impact of this groundbreaking program. Doctors at Women and Infants tell us they are seeing one to two more babies born with neonatal abstinence syndrome a month. But also in the past year, they've been able to trim hospital stays significantly, being able to get moms and their babies home and on the road to health even faster. For mothers of babies born with neonatal abstinence syndrome, the days after delivery can be filled with worry and concern. Infants with NAS can go through withdrawal after birth after being exposed to addictive drugs in the womb. One year ago, we showed you a new family-centered model at Women and Infants Hospital that was created to try and accelerate the recovery for these babies and to keep their mothers close by during their hospital stays. We're actually starting to see an overall drop in the length of hospitalization and the length of treatment that these babies need. Dr. Adam Chinsky is the medical director of the newborn nursery at Women and Infants. He's been collecting data over the last year and calls the progress being made in treatment time for these babies remarkable. Our lengths of treatment went from about 16 down to 11 days, so we've really cut off a good portion of hospital care. And with a lot of these patients being on state-supported health insurance programs, that's a huge saving to everyone within the state itself. But it also has reduced the amount of opioid that these babies need to see after they've been born. So they're actually getting more interventions that don't require medication. While treatment varies across the country, the medication of choice to treat these babies here is morphine. What we've expanded on is not just looking at what is the best drug to treat the baby in the moment. We're also now starting to expand to say what is the best drug to treat the baby from a developmental standpoint. According to Dr. Chinsky, there are several success stories of local moms over the past year as well. There was one mom we had recently, once she found out she was pregnant, she got herself into treatment, got herself into therapy. In addition to that, she I want to say doubled down on providing the care for her baby. Once her baby was born, she moved into the hospital with us. I don't think I ever saw her leave. She showered, she ate here, she did everything here. She was probably the model mom you'd ever see, someone who getting pregnant was that life-changing moment for her. She took the support we gave her with her own motivation and really changed her life completely. Getting these babies and their moms healthy and back home sooner is encouraging for Chinsky and his team, but it doesn't end there. Brown University's Dr. Barry Lester says there needs to be a continued focus on an NAS baby's health and development once he or she leaves the hospital. What happens to them? I mean, these are babies who are at risk because they were exposed to opioids. They're at risk because some of them grow up in difficult environments and clinically, we're worried about what's going to happen to them. And that is why Brown University Medical has launched a family care follow-up program where they will closely monitor these NAS babies for the first years of their life, tracking all of their important cognitive milestones. I'm Danielle North, Eyewitness News. Charting a better road to recovery, our coverage continues tonight. Coming up new at 6, a closer look at the new Brown Center, and we talked to one of the first mothers to enroll her son in the program. Now, charting a better road to recovery. According to the Rhode Island Department of Health, the number of infants born in Rhode Island with neonatal abstinence syndrome more than doubled in the decade between 2006 and 2016. At 5, we told you about a new model of care at Women and Infants Hospital aimed at better treatment for these babies born to opiate addicted mothers. New at 6, Eyewitness News anchor Danielle North takes a closer look at a program that's focused on the future and improving the long-term outcome for babies with NAS. Women and Infants Hospital says it's decreasing both length of stay and length of treatment for babies born with NAS. And now the hospital is partnering up with Brown University Medical. They're working on the next stage. What impact, if any, will NAS have on these babies later in life? He's such an amazing baby. I, I was concerned about hitting milestones and just seeing how he was doing, and I, I couldn't be more amazed. Sebastian is a happy four-month-old boy. His mother, Anne-Marie, so thankful for his health and for her continued sobriety. She became addicted to opioids years ago after receiving an opiate prescription to treat a shoulder injury. You know, months later, I was still taking Vicodin, 
and then all of a sudden you don't need them anymore. Well, they don't think you need them anymore. I hit 24 and it became a problem that I couldn't stop. With rehabilitation, family support, and visits to a methadone clinic, Anne Marie was able to overcome her addiction. But when she became pregnant, she was concerned how the methadone treatments would affect her baby. Once I found out, I was just so thrilled, and I was also a nervous wreck. The entire nine months, I was just like, you know, what do I do next? Am I okay? Anne Marie's concerns didn't dissipate even after a safe delivery because there's very little data available regarding the long term effects of babies born to opioid addicted mothers. The new kid on the block, and the reason for the escalation in the past couple of years is the prescription pain meds. Who's that population? That's us, right? That's middle class. Dr. Barry Lester is the director of the Brown Center for the Study of Children at Risk. He's heading up an extensive new program to examine babies like Sebastian. Dr. Lester works with moms like Anne Marie who want to make sure their babies are hitting all of their developmental milestones. What do you tell them? We tell them we don't know. What we do know from the research is that the effects of drugs have to do with the interaction between the drug and the environment. Sebastian will be one of dozens of babies who will be screened on a routine basis. The team at the Brown Center will collect important information that can help benefit other mothers and babies in the future. There really isn't a lot of information and if you know, listening to my baby's cry is going to help them find a better way or even a, you know, a, even a faster way. If one of those things can help make it an easier transition for a mom or a baby, then why not do it? The standardized assessments will then be used for research, but until more is known about the direct impact of opioids on a child's development, Dr. Lester says he's optimistic for the future of babies in this follow-up program who are also being raised in a healthy home. You take that same kid, you rear them in a good environment, and odds are they're going to develop normally. And the Brown Center is still looking for more mothers and babies with NAS to participate in its study. For more information to see if you or someone you know could be eligible, head to our website, WPRI.com. I'm Danielle North, Eyewitness News.